Howdy, I'm back again, Tubal Kane, and it's about two weeks later since I did, did the last segment in the basement, but I've been traveling and the weather's been too hot, and it's early in the morning, so I'm out in my foundry here getting ready to uh, mold Herb Blair's uh, curved spoke flywheel. Now, I'm not going to show all of the steps here at molding because it's covered in so many of my other videos and uh, at the risk of boring you and uh, for, at the need for expediting things here I'm going to just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, ram this side up here this first half of the mold as you can see so alright let's get started this is the drag which is the bottom half of the uh, the flask and this is the half of the pattern without any pins on it so it will set uh, flat. I'm going to put a little uh, parting sand on it. Sift the little sand with the riddle and then I'm going to go ahead and ram it up. This is Petrobon sand of course. See you in a minute. All right, the drag has been rammed up, and I'm going to flip it over. There it is, and I have to put the uh, other half of the pattern on here, of course, from Herb Blair, and then I'll put the uh, cope on. Now, if you want to see more detail, watch my other videos where I do molding, so you'll just have to search for those. Also, I offer a complete course with 28 chapters on molding, casting, and other foundry practice. So you'll see that offered in some of my promotional type videos. I'm still not sure whether I'm going to uh, pour zinc or lead into this one, but at any rate, I'm going to put th uh, this tapered riser right here on the hub because that's the thick spot. And uh, I'm going to put, uh, cut a uh, sprue hole right about over here with a gate running into it. Now, since this is going to be uh, just rather precariously balanced here. I'm going to have to hang on to that as I ram that up. First I'll put again a little bit of fine sand riddled onto it. It's all rammed up and I'm going to cut a sprue hole right there being careful not to uh, strike the pattern. I use my thumb as a depth gauge. And I'll remove this riser. Remember it's tapered so it'll pull right out. I'm quite confident. Wiggle it a little bit. Out it comes and then I'll take the spoon if I can find it here and form a bit of a pouring basin or funnel. I don't worry if a little bit falls in because I'm going to open it up and clean it out and I like to tamp that down with my fingers so that uh, no loose sand is uh, in the area that will get washed in with the molten metal. Now I'm ready to open it. Well, the pattern stayed together. Sometimes it will uh, separate and be in the, both the cope and the drag, but you can see that an awful lot of sand fell in. And that's because on this pattern that Herb made, remember it was laid up with uh, a 3D printer in the layer, so there, there's roughness here on the inside, or maybe not enough draft. It's still going to work, but there will be some cleanup uh, required in the final casting.
I'm a little disappointed in the way that fell in. This is not a problem. That's from that riser. But I need to cut a gate, and it, it fell in right here quite a bit. So there's the gate. Now let me take the pattern out. Now that one, of course, came right off, that half. And if I can find some uh, drywall screws here, I will pull this one out. I would expect this half to pull out a little more cleanly because I'm able to tap it. So hopefully it'll withdraw a little bit better. But who knows? All right, let's see how this one draws. I like to wiggle it just a little if I can. And that one pulled out uh, rather cleanly because of the way that I was able to, to move it. And uh, I was unable to do that in the first half because it, it uh, stayed with the mold. So this isn't too bad. I always expect things like that to happen in a trial pattern that you haven't, that I haven't used before. Now I will pull the loose sand off, and there's always going to be some that tears off. It was loose. And we'll now put the other half on and close the mold. That one is ready to pour. I only have uh, one little round flask like I just used. Uh, and most of my flasks are, are very large and I, it's, it's a lot of work to mold if you don't need it. Uh, if you don't need one that size, but notice that this little uh, flywheel barely fits in there, but that's what I'm going to use. So. In it goes, a little bit off to the side, but try to center it. And then when I ram it, I have to be very careful. When you ram a pattern sometimes too much on one side, it'll shift over. So ram it evenly. And I'm not going to show all of this because it's just too similar to what I showed a few moments ago. But I'll, I'll show you after I flip it over. Okay, same thing here. Now I've set up the culprit drag a little different than I did on the other one because I don't have a board that will accommodate these pins. Some of you may not know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter, I guess. Again, that's going to go right there as a riser and a sprue cut there, and I'll see you in a minute. Second half rammed up, sprue cut. Riser pulled. Where's my spoon? Oh, how can I lose things that quickly? They fall into the sand on me. I very much expect both halves of the pattern to stay in the bottom half of the molds, but I would prefer it if it would stick in the sand uh, and there'd be less fallout I believe. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh good, it did stick here. So now I will try to remove these without uh, doing too much damage to the sand. And I still maintain the correct distance there, luckily enough. So let me cut that real quick, the gate. And attempt to remove these. Again, I, I like these drywall screws because they're so pointed and they, they go right into that plastic that uh, Herb used. Well, I've tapped on it, twisted it, cajoled it, and so on. I do not believe that pattern is going to pull cleanly out. And if it if just uh, falls, causes the sand to fall in, then I'm not even going to pour this one. So I just believe there's too much roughness or, or a lack of draft or, or some undercut. So let's see what happens. Quit talking about it and do it.
Hmm. Pulled a little easier than what I thought, but there's a lot of fall in. See all the sand that broke off? Now I'll try and uh, remove the pattern from the other one. This is not going to be good. Now let's see if this half withdraws. I have tapped it for three minutes. It's important to try to pull it straight up, which isn't always that easy to do. I can see it's going to break right there. Too bad, not too bad. Let me blow it now and see how much of that will fall loose. I think I'll try to zoom in to see. Okay. You know when you're old you can't remember where you put something even sometimes 30 seconds ago. What is that? I hope it isn't, in my case, early signs of Alzheimer's. I have a brother-in-law who has it, does not recognize me anymore. Okay, that one is ready to pour also. So let's move over to the melting pouring bench. And I have just come to the conclusion that, you know, this is an experiment. If I melt zinc, that's another experiment because I do it so seldom and it's been so long since I've done it. So it just uh, gives other uh, possibilities for problems. So I'm going to use my old standard of, of uh, pouring lead into both of these molds and uh, see what becomes of them. See you in a minute. I'm setting up for melting now, and you've seen my old plumber's furnace here many times. It's propane powered, and there's my molds. I use a lot of wheel weights and old type lead because it's a hardened lead. It has antimony in it, among other things. Still not as hard as I would like, but and it's it's not it's semi machinable. I'm not sure you can even get these anymore. They probably make wheel weights out of plastic now. But uh, these are the sprues left over from other flywheels that I've cast. You've seen that in my videos. So that's going to take a while to heat up, and I'll, uh, I'll see you then.